I did want to build a slightly more complex table with you and show you a couple of other attributes that you could include in your table. I'm starting with a blank page and I'm going to go ahead and just begin building the table. So we'll start off by making the table and let's immediately go ahead and add cell padding. We'll make that equal to three. And for this particular example, I'm going to specify that the border of the table be nothing. We are going to use background colors, which is going to be a little bit different from what we did before. It is also worth mentioning that once we learn CSS, many of the attributes that I'm using on the tables will ultimately be controlled with CSS. So some of the things that we're doing now are not necessarily best practice, and they have been deprecated in the newer version of HTML. But with that being said, it is still worthwhile to know these things in case you ever are working on a older version of a website or building something for an email blast where the CSS properties may not be rendered properly in all of the older applications. With that being said, since we don't know any CSS, we're going to continue to work with just HTML. As I mentioned, I've added cell padding, I've set the border to none, and for this particular table, I'm going to set the width equal to 100%. In regards to width and height, you can set width and height parameters. It is common that you will see the units of measurement either be pixels or percentages. If you just put a numeric value, it will be assumed to be a pixel value. If you specify a percent based value, then it'll show up as a percent. The first thing we're going to do on this particular table is we'll make the T body tag. I'm not going to include a T head or T foot, so I'm going right into the T body. I'll make a TR, and inside this TR, we're going to make a TH. This TH is going to say sea creatures. Next, I'm going to move on and make my next TR. This TR is going to contain four TD elements, and I am going to go ahead and type the text inside the TDs to start off with. If we save the page and look at it in the browser, you're going to see it looks a little odd. And temporarily, let me just turn on the border so you can really visualize what's happening. You can see that once again, I have created one row with one column. The second row has four columns. So in order to make this work correctly, I need to do my column span. I'll come to the first row and the first table cell, and we're going to add the attribute of column span we will column span four. If we save now, you can see that my table has been altered. It is also worth mentioning that because I made my table 100% width, it doesn't matter how big my browser window is, the table is going to grow and shrink so that it can take up 100% of the available space. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add some properties so we can add some color to the background of the table. I will set the border back to zero because once we set the background color on these table rows, then we'll be able to see the separation between the cells. I'll come to my first row and I'm going to use the attribute of BG color equals. Inside, I will pass in a hex value. A hex value is a representation of color and we'll talk more about this later. A hex value is always preceded by the pound sign. The reason we're getting this background color is this is a result of one of the packages we had installed previously. I really like this as it visually helps me to identify the colors throughout my file. Let's go ahead and let's add a background color on the second row as well. Once again, I'll specify BG color, and then we will use our next hex value. This one is going to be 21ACBB. If we save now and we refresh, you can see how I have background colors. The lines we see between the cells are actually a result of the cell spacing. We did not declare cell spacing, but if I come back into my table and I set the cell spacing to zero, you will see that those separator lines, those white lines disappear. I want there to be a little bit of cell spacing, so I'm going to add this back in and specify one, which will make the lines slightly thinner. Next, we'll go ahead and we'll build a couple of additional rows. I'm going to make my next row, and this row is going to contain four TDs. Let me just quickly build those in. The first TD is going to contain an A tag, a link. This is going to be a link to an outside website, 
So I'm using my absolute linking. I'm going to use my target equals underscore blank so that this link will open up in a separate tab. We are actually going to make an image be the link rather than text. We have not done that yet, but it's very simple to do. I'll go ahead and just nest the image tag inside of the A tag. And let's go into our images folder. I'll use my turtle.jpg image. And for my alt tag, I will say sea turtle swimming. Our first column is going to be the photo, which is what we just placed. Our second column is going to contain the name. And let's go ahead and place an H2 inside of this particular cell. My next cell is going to contain a paragraph. And the final cell is going to contain an unordered list. I did want to show you how the table element can contain a variety of children elements. So we can put images, links, H tags, paragraph tags, a number of items inside of the table tag. Let's take a look at what we have so far. If we refresh, you can see here's the photo, here's the column with the title, the classification, and the facts. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to set a background color on this row. So I'll once again come to the TR tag, we'll use our BG color attribute, and we're going to set this to a hex value of DE, 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 which is a light gray. Now because I'm using percentages, you can see as I grow and shrink my page, my cells get bigger and smaller. We are going to lock down the width of some of these cells by specifying some of them to have a fixed width and others to have a percent based width. I want this first column cell to not get any larger than my image. I know what the width of the image is, so it will be easy for me to lock down the width of this cell. In order to lock down the width, I'm going to come to the TD tag. I'm going to apply this width to the very first column that is going to control the width of all the subsequent columns. So I will come to the photo TD and we're going to add a width attribute and we're going to set this to 300. I do not need to put units here because pixels is assumed unless it identifies some sort of unit. For the rest of the cells, we're going to apply percent based sizing. So my second column is going to be 20%. My third column will also be 20%. And the fourth column is going to take up 60%. Now, obviously, if we added 300 pixels, plus 20%, plus 20%, plus 60, that's going to exceed 100%. These values are going to take up whatever is available. So first it will assign the pixel width of 300, and then it's going to assign 60% to the facts column, 20% of what's available to the classification, and the name columns. So if we refresh, you can see that now, even when my page gets larger, this first column never exceeds 300 pixels. The rest of the columns are going to grow and shrink as needed based on the size of the page. I don't need to assign the width values to any of the subsequent rows because the first row, as I mentioned, is going to control the width of those particular items. Now, in addition to having the class of Reptilia, we also want to say what the kingdom is, and we want this information to show up in the classification column. I'm going to actually create an additional row, and then we'll use the row span to make our table work in the way that we want. After the TR tag that we just made, I'm going to make another TR tag. This TR tag is going to have the same background color. Inside of this TR tag, I'll make a TD tag, and my TD tag is going to contain a paragraph, and it will say Kingdom Animalia. When we refresh the page, the table is going to look like this. Remember that we want this particular cell to be up here. And I see that I poorly spelled Kingdom, so let's fix that really quickly. That looks better. All right, now to fix the table. In order to get this particular cell to appear underneath this cell, we're going to need to do some row spanning, as I mentioned. What we really want to do here is this is a two row area of our table. We have this first row and now we have a second row. We are going to tell the first cell, the second cell, and the fourth cell 
to row span down two rows. This will allow this particular cell to take up this portion of the table. Let me show you how this works. I'm going to come into the first cell, the one with the picture, and we're going to add a row span of two. And if we save and refresh, you can see how now the kingdom cell has been pushed over. That's because this first column is now taking up two rows and one column. We'll do the same thing for the green sea turtle cell. And finally, we'll do the same thing for the cell with the unordered list. Now when I refresh the page, you can see how we're starting to build in more complexity into our table. We have now instructed our table to column span up here in the very first row, and then to row span portions of the third row. It takes a little while to get used to building tables in this manner. I always find it very helpful to sketch out on a piece of paper how I want my table to look, and then I can kind of make a plan ahead of time in regards to which cells are going to need to column span and which cells are going to need to row span. Let's build one more row for our table. I'm still inside the body section, and we're basically going to do the same thing. We're going to build the first TR tag. Let's set a background color on this. The hex value for this particular row is going to be 38F5F4. Now we'll build our first cell. This is going to contain the link that also contains the picture. Inside the link, we will have our image, and just as we made before, we're going to need to row span this image. So I'm going to say row span two. Now if we save the page now, of course it is not completed, so it's going to look a little strange, but you can see that the image is taking up the space where we want it. We just have to build the rest of the table out. So let's do that quickly. This is really going to take on the exact same formatting as we had before. So I'll just go ahead and build this out. Here's my third column. This one will not row span, since this is the one that's going to split a row with the next TR tag that we'll make in just a moment. And finally, my last cell does need to row span, so we'll add that row span in, and then we'll create our unordered list. Now I'll go ahead and make that next TR tag. Let's assign the same background color and we'll place the content in the cell. When I refresh, you can see that it's following the same formatting that we had before. In addition to these changes, you do have the option to control where the text sits within a cell. You can see that inside my name cell, both green sea turtle and bat ray are appearing vertically in the middle of the cell. This is the default behavior. If you did not want the text to be aligned within the middle of the cell as it is right now, you can use the V align, which stands for vertical alignment, to control that. In order to do this, I would go to the TD tag and I would use V align equals, and as possible values, you can use top, middle, which is the default, or bottom. Now you can see the text is going to appear closer to the top. We'll go ahead and we'll put this V align top into the rows that contain the animal name and the facts. So I will just go ahead and use copy paste or command or control V to do this. Now when I refresh the page, if you watch the facts and the bat ray, as soon as I refresh, those are going to move to the top of their respective cells. Hopefully this has given you a few more ideas on how you can control your table. We've built a more complex table. We've worked with both our row span and column span, and we've learned some attributes that allow us to further control the layout of our table. As I mentioned before, many of the attributes that I've shared with you have been deprecated because they need to be controlled using CSS. We will learn how to do that once we learn CSS, but for right now, I did want to introduce you to how you could build tables and talk about the various attributes that you are allowed to use with tables.